do. We are so excited to have with us tonight Mr. Dan Hazlett. Mr. Hazlett has served as a faculty member at Stanley Community College in North Carolina for the past 44 years and is currently serving as the state advisor for the North Carolina chapter of PBL. In his spare time, Mr. Hazlett likes to encourage his students to take the escalator so that they can elevate their future. Thank you again for taking the time out of your evening to share some wonderful advice with us, Mr. Hazlett. Hey, good evening, Kimberly. Always glad to do anything for PBL and FBLA. Perfect. So I have a couple of questions to ask you um, since you have a lot of experience with the organization and I know I'm the old man in the organization. <laughs> Perfect. So how long have you been with FBLA PBL and what inspired you to get involved? Well, actually, I've been a local advisor for 43 years, uh, state advisor now for 12 years. Uh, back in the early 70s, Stanley Community College was a brand new college. And we were looking for some things that would build our reputation. And PBL became one of the major things in that, uh, in that impetus to, uh, to just build the college and reputation of the college here in Stanley County and in North Carolina. But uh, as PBL has proved even throughout the country. Perfect. Well, we're glad to have you with us. You're one of our, you're one of our best advisors and one of uh, my favorite people in PBL. So as a PBL advisor, you know firsthand how beneficial joining PBL is. Uh, so what would you tell FBLA members who are still in high school to encourage them to join PBL and be part of our PBL family? Well, I think the word family is important. It is that networking, that getting to know people, that opportunity to work with other people, to go outside uh, the things that you do commonly. I think PBL also, also offers a real advantage in the opportunity to uh, act independently, make independent decisions. Uh, I tell our state officers so often that uh, it's a really unique opportunity for them because they get to decide, make the decisions, but then they're also the responsible people for carrying them out. And so they learn both sides of that, that coin. It's not just deciding here's what we want to do and then somebody else does it, uh, but it's deciding here's what we want to do, here's how we're going to get it done, the evaluation along the way and then celebrating the success when it's all done. So I think that's one of the primary things uh, that PBL offers. I think also that whole, uh, that whole area now of professionalism, uh, the learning to, to dress, the business etiquette, the communications, just think so many things uh, that PBL offers in how to develop yourself professionally uh, that just puts you a step ahead of so many other people when it comes to the job market. Perfect. As an advisor, you've definitely seen many students grow into professional uh, men and women. And so what are some examples that you've seen throughout your time as an advisor of students who came in, um, you know, and they completely transformed because of their experience in PBL and maybe even helped them to get their dream job? Well, now here's where you may have to stop me or we'll be here all evening because uh, through the years I've had so many success stories. A few that automatically come to mind, uh, a gal who served as our local president and went on to serve as a state officer. Well, as a matter of fact, she'd served as a state FBLA officer too before coming to us, uh, Martha Sue Hall. And Martha Sue became the first woman to be elected to a county commissioner spot in uh, Stanley County. So uh, it was one of those things we were really proud of. And it was about three or four years after she finished at the college. So I dragged out all these old pictures and did a big bulletin board of pictures about her. So she's certainly a celebrity just last year. Kathy Allman, who served as uh, our local chapter president, was selected as the CEO and president of the Stanley County Chamber of Commerce. And uh, that certainly uh, is a success story for PBL because she's so quick to credit PBL for developing the leadership skills and introducing her to a lot of the people that she worked with in the uh, in the preparation for taking that job. And we've had her at our state conference to do a workshop on what a chamber is and uh, how students can get involved with the chamber and the opportunities that are there. Uh, another student that I think of often, uh, Carolyn Ladotti. Uh, Carolyn uh, was very active in PBL, attended national conferences, and went on to a, a very 
good career and made a lot of uh, stock investments. And I heard Carolyn uh, do a workshop one time and she was telling this group that uh, she had made many investments during her, uh, her career, uh, but probably the best, best investment she made in her whole life was the $20 she paid for PBL dues when she came to Stanley Community College. And that was back in the uh, early 80s. So uh, that one always stands out for me. And then uh, uh, you probably remember a couple of years ago, a young fellow named Brandon Harkey. Brandon came to us uh, having struggled in high school and having some issues and uh, came to us and got involved in PBL, I think because he thought we were a party group. I really think he thought we were a social fraternity. Uh, but uh, as a result, uh, Brandon's life just totally, totally turned around and we were so proud of his accomplishments. And he uh, he was at one of our state executive board meetings and a man on the uh, professional division board spotted him and said, I'd like to interview him for a job. And I said, well, uh, he asked me what school he was from. I told him, well, actually he was from my school, but he had about a year to go before he would finish. And he said, uh, I'll wait on him. And he hired him part-time. And then after he was graduated, gave him a full-time job and a very successful banker with Wells Fargo. So uh, you just never know with PBL, the people you meet, what uh, doors it may open, what opportunities it may give you. So those are those are some of the star students. Of course, there are hundreds of students uh, that I run into who are just successful, not only here, uh, but across the, the country. As I've seen some of you folks when you first got involved and were first running for national offices and first doing workshops and things like that. And then to see you uh, over a period of two or three years take on such uh, tremendous roles of responsibilities like you have, you know, lots of success stories in PBL everywhere you go. Perfect. Thank you for sharing those. Those are definitely inspiring. And um, it's great to hear that after so many years, so many people still come back and credit where they've gotten to just being a member of FBLA PBL. And I can definitely relate to that. And I know so many other people can. Um, so currently, you're the, you're the longest ever serving instructor at Stanley Community College for a total of 44 years. But I'm curious to find out what was your dream job when you were a kid? Uh, Miss Buckley asked me that one time and then laughed when I gave her the answer. It was to be an undertaker. <laughs> now don't ask why and don't ask what changed my mind. I really don't have any idea. But I'm glad that I'm, in, I'm an instructor instead of an undertaker. <laughs> That's funny. We're glad to have you with PBL. <laughs> um, so how did you get to where you are now serving students as both a professor and the state advisor of North Carolina PBL? Oh, I think uh, just other than uh, family and church work, that's been my priority, trying to be successful in the classroom. I really enjoy the students. I like working with students. I'm kind of a, the PBL people never uh, believe this, but in the classroom, I'm a very no nonsense person, you know. Uh, I got written up one time, well, not written up, but a student in an evaluation wrote that uh, the thing he disliked about me most was because I started class on time and kept them the full time. And that's probably true for all these 44 years. You could count on one hand the times anybody got out early. Uh, but I think it's just realizing the importance of education and then trying to make the students uh, build that appreciation in them as well. I think. Uh, the other thing is just taking advantage of the opportunities. Uh, when we started PBL, uh, I saw it really as an opportunity for the students, never really looked at it in terms of an it, it's being an opportunity for my professional growth. But over these years, I credit so many of the things I've learned and tried in classrooms and have done as a result of uh, things that have happened in PBL and people I've met there. So I think those two things have probably uh, contributed to just the, the longevity of it all. Uh, people ask me all the time when I'm going to completely retire and they say, well, not until it's a have to matter as far as I'm concerned. So how has the landscape of both the college and the PBL experience changed since you first started? Oh, I think uh, probably 
two primary things, uh, the online work, uh, doing online courses, and uh, certainly there are advantages to online education. But I, when I teach online courses, I miss that face-to-face -face connection with the students. I always laugh and say that I used to could walk in a restaurant anywhere in town and uh, at table after table, there would be somebody I had had in class. And now I walk in, I look around, and I wonder if I've had them in class uh, because I really don't know them like I used to know the uh, students when all my classes were seated classes. And now we're about half and half probably with seated and online courses. Uh, the other thing I see is I, I just don't know that students today are as interested in volunteering for things. Uh, they want to join. It's not so much a matter of wanting to join, but then the volunteering to, to do. And uh, of course, I tell people all the time, it's fine to join PBL just to get it on your resume because th that will hook them. And I hope that something will you know, strike their fancy and their uh, interest and they'll get involved once they get in there, even though they think they're not going to, to do anything. But I do, uh, I do see that as a real difference uh, over the last several years. Just uh, you have to sell the program more today than ever before. I definitely uh, understand where you're coming from with that one, um, having to really sell what students can get out of uh, opportunities instead of students being excited for any opportunity. We've been fortunate that there are always there's always that handful that will do whatever and wants to do whatever. Uh, you know Katrina Sams, uh, when Katrina joined PBL, uh, she said, yeah, I'll do this just because I want to pass this class. Like that was going to make a difference in her passing the class. And she said, but I'm not going to do any traveling or I'm not going to do any extra work. Well, you know, now if the key turns on the school van, Katrina's on it and ready to go. She said she would never fly, but she flew to Chicago and uh, California and national. So, you know, you just never know when a student joins when that might be the student who becomes the star of the crowd. What would you say is the most rewarding aspect of your position? Oh, there's no question about that. It's the people, uh, the opportunity to meet people, to share with people, to talk with people, to exchange ideas, uh, just uh, that, that networking. Uh, you use the word family. We say that all the time here in North Carolina, that our state conference is our annual family reunion. And we have a lot of advisors who have been in the organization for years. And it's that opportunity to to be with them once a year. But the same thing at the national conference. Uh, there are people that we just know will be there. And it's uh, yeah, like a member of the family you haven't seen for a good while. Uh, but uh, it's beyond just knowing them. It's that idea exchange. Because in most cases, they're leaders in their fields in, in the educational programs they're in. And so they have so much that they have to share and there's so much to learn from them. So definitely the people. You know, every year I say, I probably won't like the next national president. And then, you know, you come along and I like you just as well or better than the last one. So. Well, I'm glad you like me. That makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> um, so on the flip side of the most rewarding aspect, what would you say would be the most challenging aspect of your position? Well, that goes right along with uh, with the number of years. I, I think it's that keeping the program fresh, uh, coming up with new ideas, uh, uh, just making sure that the program fits the needs of the current students. Uh, you know, it's easy when you've done it for a while just to say, well, here's what has been successful. So we'll just keep doing that. Uh, I was working on our state conference program uh, last night and uh, I was just thinking about the things that had changed on, on our state conference program just over the last few years. And uh, same thing with the local program, the different activities, projects that we do now uh, that we weren't doing earlier. And I think that's just uh, always a challenge for an advisor, especially an advisor who's been around a while like I have uh, to just come come up with the ideas or listen to the ideas of the students and roll with them. So as a seasoned advisor, 
what tips would you share with a new FBLA or PBL advisor who wants to grow a large and engaged chapter? Uh, think of the possibilities. Uh, my first state conference, the first award won by a Stanley student was a jar of pickles. A Stanley student won the door prize at the awards banquet. And we have all these pictures of this gal standing there holding up a jar of pickles uh, as our first award. Didn't mean a whole lot right then, uh, but all these years later now, anytime uh, you know, we pull out a gold seal award or something like that, my mind goes back to that jar of pickles. Uh, just to think of the possibilities, to look at the successful groups. Uh, don't be afraid to copy the ideas where PBL people are glad to share things they've done. And we certainly don't mind, when, well, now I won't say we don't mind when it comes to a competitive event, maybe, but uh, by and large, you know, anything that one chapter's done that's successful, uh, we're more than glad for another chapter to uh, put their twist on it and do it. So I think that's definitely um, one thing, uh, just to participate. It, it, here in North Carolina, we, we have some new chapters and they'll say, well, I think we'll come to state conference this year, but we're not going to enter anybody in events, or we're not going to run anybody for a state office, or you know, any of those things. We're not going to participate, really. We're just going to come see how it's done. And I'm like, no, you'll never get anywhere doing that, doing it that way. You have to just jump in with two feet, uh, get every student in a competitive event, look at some good student and run him for a state office or a, a committee position, uh, make sure all your students go to every leadership workshop, you know, be there and be a full participant in what, what's going on. I think those two things probably can make the, the biggest difference in a new chapter. Perfect. And the last question I have for you is, as an advisor and mentor, what tips would you give to an FBLA PBL member who is unsure of what career to pursue or what steps to take, but knows that they want to make an impact? Of course, you saved a hard question to last, Kimberly. But uh, first of all, I'm a communications instructor, business communications, technical report writing, professional writing. So I think definitely start off with doing all you can possibly do uh, to improve the communication skills. What I'm finding is that uh, this, our students who are being very successful in their careers are the students who can make presentations, the students who can speak before not a large group of people, not formal public speaking, uh, but can speak before a group of people, get their idea across, uh, people who can write reports. So anything in that communications area, I think is certainly important. Um, be open, network and be open to possibilities. Uh, as I mentioned with Brandon, Brandon wasn't looking for, even looking for a job that day. Uh, he just was putting on a good show and the right person happened to see him and a career was born. That certainly, uh, just be open to the different things. Get over the fears. I talked about Katrina and the flying. You know, if you're going to be successful, you're going to have to drive in the city. You're going to have to get on an airplane every now and then. Uh, you, you have to get over those fears, even just that, even just that fear of meeting new people. And so I think those are things that PBL helps so much over a period of time you don't even realize uh, I've learned these skills or I'm over this fear. You've just done it and it, uh, and it happens. And then, of course, I think that whole idea of uh, every job is an important job. Uh, it doesn't have to be the biggest title in the world. If you find pleasure in it and you realize that you're serving other people in it, then you're a success. And so I think uh, sometimes people want to look at going straight to the top and uh, not realizing how many really good careers there are uh, without having to be the, uh, the highest paid person on the totem pole. So, yeah, you know, those are just some things I thought of that, uh, thought, you know, keep these things in mind as you're planning a career. And I think one of the exciting things about your whole generation is the number of careers that are possibilities. Uh, when I finished college, you know, the careers were, I won't say limited, but there just weren't the opportunities and the number of different things that there are now. And part of it is awareness. We weren't aware of some of the careers that existed, I'm sure, where now with the uh, 
uh, with the internet, you have so many ways of knowing here are the, the different jobs that are out there, even though you may have gone to college to be a teacher or to be this, that, or the other. Uh, there are just those, you may have gone to be an undertaker <laughs> and then found something totally different once you finished, uh, finished that program. I keep saying I'm going to take some uh, continuing education classes in, in uh, funeral service directing. <laughs> well, uh, if you do that, we'll have to see about creating a new competitive event so that you now can. Uh, an idea. <laughs> so you can uh, so you can uh, do the test. Miss Buckley will know where it came from, though. <laughs> we won't even have to tell her. Right. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mr. Hazlett, for. No, really, thank you. Uh, thank you for the wonderful job you're doing as national president. Uh, you did such a great job when you were here in North Carolina. I hear that from other people that you've, other states you've been to. Uh, looking forward to Baltimore and an exciting NLC with your presiding. So uh, if not before, we'll see you there. Perfect. Thank you so much. And again, I appreciate all of the wisdom that you bring. And it was so interesting to learn more about your career tonight. Thank you, Kia. To all of the FBLA PBL members who are watching, Thank you so much for supporting this exciting initiative and for the rest of the membership year, I wish you luck as you work toward elevating your future.